We are live, everybody. But we're also on tape. We're deep down in the bowels of Leith's music, Magic Mike, Bonnie, Chris Folds, Marty Hastings, Kamloops last week, episode number 36. A lively morning here in the studio so far. Yep, 36, and it's cold outside, and it's a nice day, though. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about movies, Dumb and Dumber, mm-hmm. Spinal Tap. Mm-hmm. Uh, you still haven't seen Dumb and Dumber. That's nope. uh, yep. disappointing. Yep, I'm going to watch it this weekend. Okay, good talk. Curling last night. You were, uh, <laughs> you, were, you were curling last night? I got called to be a spare at the Kamloops Curling Club, a place that should never be torn down, in my opinion. And um, I, uh, I've curled twice in the last 10 years, so I, I get called when they can't find anybody. So, and it was, it's so much fun, and I'm so lousy, but it's so much fun. I ran into uh, Terry Bolton, who is the um, husband of uh, Linda Bolton, mm-hmm. the curling queen of Kamloops and the longtime Kamloops This Week sales lady, who I think still works for us. And we, had, we were chatting about the future of curling. He read your story. We are talking about what, And he thinks the great idea would be to take Memorial Arena and take the Kamloops Curling Club and build a brand new facility that incorporates curling and hockey rink and uh, some convention space and underground so parking. So keep the building, the old buildings, and well, no, you, them kind you, of thing? You, yeah, you, you, no, you, you build a brand new, on that footprint, you build a brand new facility that has curling, hockey, convention space, and maybe you tie it in with a brand new hotel next door. So you level everything down. Yeah, and, and you build again. a brand new place there. Uh, you have underground parking. You maybe you partner up with CP to build a bridge going over to the Sandman Center. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you get the private sector in it to uh, take some ease off the taxpayers. And you have someone who owns the uh, Thompson Hotel and you build this huge P3, you know, mm. private public partnership thing. I, yeah, It'd I be great, f- that's a great place, but you know what? The land's too valuable. It'll become a condos or maybe another cannabis shop and we're out of luck. Yeah, I got uh, some feedback as I expected from some of the older guard, Barry McPhee, Camel Sports Hall of Famer, curling legend kind of in this town. He's ardently against anything happening to this club. Yeah. It's just the, the, the history is you know. too much. And I, so he's got a few of his buddies calling me and you'll you'll see that story at some yeah. point in the paper. They, they're they going to have their say, right? These these people deserve yeah. their say too. It's a great location. It's a nice club. It's got feel. It's got feel. Unlike Byron McCorkle calls it tired. I'd say no way, man. Compared to MacArthur Island, it has soul. <laughs> MacArthur Island is sterile, much like City Hall. Anyway, here we okay, go. Okay, what's not <laughs> sterile? <laughs> Well, I'm talking about, you know, you know the, the politicals look at it. They look at things in a very analytical and clinical way. And you have to do that when the dollars and cents are in there. But it's, it's not like that. The club is, is amazing down there. I love it. Let's talk about the show today. Uh, you're going to talk politics, civic election, slate politics slate as politics. well. Yep. I'm going to bounce around in my segment. Storm, Wolfpack, Thunder Sky, Walking Bear. Matt Dunstone's at the Briar right now speaking of curling. And then we're going to meet a friend of mine, Brandalf of the Shire. You probably don't even get that reference, do you? Do you understand that? Yes, I do. It's, it's that it was the fantasy stuff about uh, Harry Potter going to Middle Earth <laughs> or something like that, right? Yes. <laughs> I knew you'd they have got, no clue. They got those hobbits and, uh, and wizards and stuff like do that. Do you know Brandy a little bit? I don't know Brandy at all. You've never met her? Nope. Okay. Well, she's a blossoming media mogul. Yes. The Discourse, Sun Peaks Independent News, yes. Indigenous News, The Wren. She's got a lot going on, Mike, and uh, I don't understand all of it, but I know this. We actually uh, distribute Sun Peaks Independent News, I think, monthly in uh, our paper, Camelot This Week, okay. so we help them out. I didn't know that. The Wren is new. Wrens are a diverse family, Mike, be ready for this, of small wild birds, okay, Mike? They're known for their loud and complex songs, and we have a songbird of our own in here. <laughs> Thank you. And we drink exclusively McDonald's coffee on this show. We love McDonald's for supporting us. Brandy Seacon. I want them to see me and know that there's a new face in town and that um, it's not the big corporate guys that own our stores, that it is a local family that, you know, sees us at hockey tournaments and in the community and having a beer. You're buying local when you buy McDonald's and I always like to sing the praises of my guy. Herman Hothi at New Leaf Produce Market. Barry's on special right now. Go down there and check it out. What is it that we know? There it is, another fresh stock on a Wednesday morning at New Leaf Produce Market. But what is it that we know about Christopher Folds, Kamloops last week co-host? Well, we know this. Habits for talent, which means his idea of a big night out, well, you're going to the Highwaymen or maybe down the road to Alder Grove to the Alder Inn. But what he does know and always has and always will is berries because right there in his own backyard, it's Newfeld Farms. And Newfeld Farms is in cahoots with New Leaf Produce Market. Help my goodness, Steve. Are these strawberries ever good? You're quiet today, Herman. Want some corn? Have a bite, Herm. Okay. <laughs> This month, March, 
March at New Leaf Produce Market. Get those frozen berries on special. Come on down. Get them while you can. These are going fast. Before we get to your segment, let's meet Jessica Wallace and Michael Potestio in The Last Week Clique. So the municipal election campaign is off to an early start following word uh, announcement by Kamloops Mayor Ken Christian that he will not be seeking re-election. We have heard from two individuals who have said that they will seek to replace him. Uh, the first, Kamloops uh, Councillor Arjun Singh, the longest tenured councillor who had been rumoured to be making uh you know, uh, a run for some time, announced on Friday his intention to do so. He says that he wants to unite. He wants to uh, help in the recovery post-pandemic uh, and bring Kamloopsians together. Then we're hearing from a, a former councillor, Ray Dollywall. He was on council for a short time in recent years, also a businessman. Uh, he is intending to run as mayor, but as part of a rarely seen slate. So that should add an interesting element to the election cycle. Uh, finally, we've heard from TNRD Chair Ken Gillis uh, that he does not think he will be running in this fall's municipal election. He has said that he will not step down uh, following calls publicly from directors for him to do so in the wake of the TNRD spending scandal. Uh, but he said at this point he does not see himself running in the fall. So the election campaign appears to be well underway, many, many months out from election day, which is uh, October 15th this fall. Uh, we will be following along with updates as they arise and um, keep us posted if you hear of anything. We uh, expect it to be an interesting race this year. So in this week's newspaper, we have a story uh, detailing the record high inflation that we've been seeing across Canada these last few months here. Record highs, record 30-year highs that are being seen. And if you're a BC resident, uh, you've probably been paying about 4% more for items according to the Consumer Price Index uh, this past January and December than you were in December and January a year ago, which is about double what inflation usually goes for year over year, which is about a 2% increase. Now, the reason, you guessed it, COVID-19. So the Bank of Canada has come out recently and raised its uh, target interest rate for the first time since the pandemic began. That uh, rate was slashed to 0.25% uh, uh, in response to the pandemic, and it's now just been raised for the first time in two years to about half a percent. Now that's being done in an effort to try and bend the curve back down of these rising costs, get inflation under control. But the Russian invasion of Ukraine threatens to prolong high prices. Now, also in the paper this week, I spoke with a social advocate in town, Glenn Hilke, who detailed to me a harrowing experience that he had with one of his clients uh, late last month in February, in which this client had a mental health uh, episode, and uh, Hilke was uh, punched and stabbed by the man in the process. Now, he, he's sharing his story, he says about uh, the incident to right, try and raise awareness for the need for more mental health services in town. That's all I have for now. So, back to Marty and Chris in the studio. Brought to you by McDonald's. I got two free Big Macs to give away, so share this episode on Facebook for a chance to win. Folds, uh, Wallace touched on it, but you want to go deeper into the politics scene. Lots going on right now, even though the election's not till October. Uh, Reed Hamer Jackson, whose son we had on the show in the summer. The Tugboat Tyrell. Yeah, La Crosse Blair. <laughs> The slate politics, uh, slate is basically another word for a, ci a civic election, uh, civic political party. So uh, in, uh, in local elections outside the Lower Mainland, everyone runs as an independent, right? Arjun Singh is not affiliated with any party. Dale Bass isn't affiliated with any party. The mayor, Mayor Christian, is not affiliated with any party. And that's the way it is in most of BC. But when you go to the Lower Mainland, Vancouver, Surrey, Burnaby, New Westminster, Richmond, Maple Ridge, they have what they call slates, which is a political party on the civic level. So they run individually. You vote for them individually, but on the ballot, it'll say Joe Smith 
and next to it, if he's part of a party, it'll say, you know, uh, the Maple Ridge Voter Society or the Vancouver yeah. Vision Party. And it gives people a chance, if they like a political party at the local level, their, their, their platform, then it's name recognition. When they go to vote, they can say, oh, I, I like that party. I like this guy, this guy, this guy. But you don't vote for the whole party. You vote individually for the people. The people that are forming this slate party here, do they actually all have similar ideas? And that's yeah. why they're getting together? That's why they got together. There's a Facebook page called, uh, the, the slate here is called Action 22. And, and Ray Dollywell will be the mayoral candidate. And they want to get nine council candidates as well. They want to control council so that they can put forward their agenda. They're very much against, they think there's too much spending in, in the city hall. And they, they're very much um, concerned about the way the city and BC Housing, the province, is dealing with the homelessness problem in town. They're very much concerned about the fact that shelters are being situated without consultation with neighborhoods. Um, and there, there, there's a couple of Facebook pages that are, that are very vocal about the problems on the street and maybe not as sympathetic to the plight of those on the street. Um, but they, 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 want, they want to clean up the city, basically. They want to clean up the streets. Uh, it's, it's, that, it's that segment of the population. And it's a lot of them. Um, and, and, and the Action 22 is a, is a nod to Action 88. So Action 88 was the only other time in Kamloops in which a slate ran. It was, it was 1988. The former highways minister, Flying Phil Gillardi, grandfather of Tom Gillardi, owner of the Blazers, uh, he, he, he retired from provincial politics. He was, a, he was a force in provincial politics under the Socreds. He helped build all the highways in town under Wacky Bennett. But um, uh, Phil Gillardi uh, came back to Kamloops, uh, and he, he ran for mayor under an Action 88 slate. And they elected four out of, uh, out of uh, eight, eight, uh, five out of nine councils. So they ran council. Um, and he walked in with the say, Ray Dollywall is coming in saying, I'm going to clean up <coughs> council. We need to cut down spending. <coughs> we need to do this and that. In, uh, 34 years ago, Phil Gillardi walked in saying, we got to change staff at City Hall. Something's wrong here. They went in there with all these great ideas and they imploded right afterwards. Yeah. Well, why do you think that happened? Like, is it because they actually just weren't really on the same page and just wanted to use this yes. party to get in? Yes. Well, he, he got in and, he, and, and, and Phil Gillardi thought there was a lot of changes needed. He was saying a lot of things pre-cam. I run the show. Whatever I say goes. <laughs> but then when they got elected, Shirley Culver, one of the councillors back in 88, said, well, no, that's not how it goes. We're all individual people. Another councillor back then, Bill Walton, a year after he got elected, they did a review and he said, well, I only ran with them because I didn't have enough money to run my own campaign and then I realized a lot of what they were telling me was bias and then by the next summer back then remember every election was every two years not every four years so basically once you're elected you're campaigning already for the next election so um, by the by uh, by the a year in um, Gallardi wasn't even at council he was at all meetings in Vancouver and Toronto and he was phoning in not figuratively and literally he was phoning into council meetings and uh, berating the council for this and that and the other thing but he was in Vancouver anyway he never attended a council meeting for most of the summer of 89 and by the next year 90 uh, he had retired and the whole coalition dis dissolved and, and in that election it became just all independence again yeah and you're not saying that's going to happen no happen I'm not again. saying that at all I'm just saying that's that's the only history we have in Kamloops of a slate of a civic uh, a civic election a civic political party which is called electoral organization by B elections BC it's very it's just fascinating because once it's uh, it's approved by elections BC and they're reviewing the application right now it'll be the 23rd in BC and the only one outside the lower mainland the only one outside of Metro Vancouver and if you go down to Vancouver you're from down there and you look at how Surrey, especially Surrey, Doug McCollum and the RCMP debacle, and you look at Vancouver, it can be very, very nasty. It can be very, well, it's very partisan by its nature. And a lot, that's why a lot of people prefer civic politics without the slates, without the parties, because it, it becomes a little more uh, consensus building. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you still think that right now Arjun's the, the, the favorite? Well, I think he, he's the favorite because right now it's like being, a, being the home team in a, in a sporting game. You get three points on the line right away. When you, your name recognition as an incumbent is worth so much, so much. So um, you can be the worst counselor in the world, but when you run again, people will remember, remember your name. And if they're not paying attention to what you've done, they'll say, oh, I recognize that name. A lot of people vote like that. They do. So the, the, the mere fact that he's an incumbent is massive. Um, and the fact that he's been in politics for four terms, and a lot of people do like him, and he's really, really passionate about what he does. I, I would say, it's, of course, he's, he's the odds-on favorite. doesn't mean he's going to win. 
but he's the odds-on favorite just by dint of the fact that he is the incumbent. He's been there for four terms. We, we talked about the dialogue thing. He just loves to sit and dialogue and talk to people and stuff like that. And Jessica Wallace asked him at this press conference, says, well, you know, yeah. you're, well, you're very well known as trying to, trying to bridge different sides and trying to appeal to everybody. As a mayor, you're going to have to make hard decisions. You can't appeal to everybody. And he's and well, it's in the story. They can read it. But he says basically he thinks that's that's a that's a that's a um, positive a positive yeah. of him to, to to see that. And I guess we'll see we'll see. Yeah, we won't be voting on a sheriff, but we'll meet the sheriff in the next segment, which is the title of Hastings. That's not Matt Dunstone. That's uh, that's Arjun Singh. I think we have one. There he is. That's a great photo by Michael Burns of Curling Canada. That's the sheriff. Matt Dunstone, he's in uh, Lethbridge as we speak, playing right now against Brendan Botcher. Botcher's the guy who uh, knocked him out of the Briar semifinal last year, the sheriff. He's never looked this confident. Uh, have you met Matt before? Uh, I don't think I've met Matt, but I've seen a lot of interviews with him, and I know he golfs with you guys sometimes at Kamloops. And right now, well, as of this day, on March 9th at 9.36 a.m., he was down 4-2 to two in the fifth end, and he is undefeated at the Briar. He's 6-0. and oh. Brendan is 5-0. and oh. mm -hmm. Another big game tomorrow, some drama we covered uh, in our newspaper with a parting of ways, and one of his teammates went to play on the Colton Flash team. The yep. Colton Flash team ended up beating Matt Dunstone's team in the Saskatchewan final this year, mm -hmm. and now uh, they play tomorrow in the, the round-robin finale of, of the Briar. Bit of a grudge match there. Bit of major grudge match, playoff implications. So uh, Matt Dunstone is confident as, as he's ever been, and we talked to him right here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just kind of from the get-go, uh, we've been we've been very comfortable, um, and yeah, just very confident. We're not really faced by much out there, um, you know, just with the way we're playing. Um, it's going to be tough for anybody to beat us, and and we know that. And even when Kui made a bunch of miracle shots last night, we still felt like we were in full control of that game. You know, obviously our our coach too, Adam Kingsbury, a lot of credit has to go to him. Like there's there's absolutely nobody better in the game um when it comes to uh comes to having teams prepared. I've noticed a couple of comments you've made just about the crowd, you know, legitimately making a difference for you, just the the, the atmosphere there and the way that you, you can maybe feed off the energy in, in the building. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, you forget how much you miss something until uh until it comes back again and, and I hope to never play another curling event uh, without without fans, that is for sure. Um, yeah, the the crowd has been uh, it's been a curling crowd I haven't experienced before. Um, they've been a lot more vocal with the players on the ice, and um, you get a lot of people yelling out at us and chirping us and cheering us on, and it's it's uh, it's an it's an awesome atmosphere. It's, uh, it's it feels like uh, feels like a hockey game almost, um, and and that's I mean to me to me that's sport, and and that's I'm I'm really enjoying that. Matt Dunstone is doing well. The storm not not so hot though. You uh, saw what happened last night. Yeah, yeah. It's too bad they uh, they, they 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 lost uh, two to one. They've lost every single game in this series. Revelstoke is a great team, and so is so is Camloops. But Revelstoke's the team to beat for the last few years. Yeah. Every single game has been one goal. Yeah. Camloops went into Revelstoke and lost two games by one goal and. They won 2-1 and lost 2-1 at home. So down 3-1, they're in a tough spot. That's Kyle Sanford. He scored the only goal last night. That's a photo from last night from our Ali guy, D. Ali D. We could tell Ali D to go right now to the top of Mount Paul and get a photo, and he'd probably get it, eh? He's the best. He's the best. He's, he's the best. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, though. They're in a tough spot. Um, I think the last series probably was too much. Too, took it out of them Game against Game seven, Chase. and they were waiting, and they were resting. Um, but, boy, you know... One goal games the whole way. That's even yeah. harder to. That's a, that's a hard thing to take. Yeah. yeah. But they went. They went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday last week. Game seven went to triple overtime, yeah. and then they had to go to play Revelstoke twice. And yeah. I think they would have had to take one game from those first two in Revelstoke if they had a chance. Yeah. Didn't happen. But worst comes to worst, they had their big game seven moment. I was there at, at uh, Mac Isle, and we'll go behind the scenes to see what it looks like and feels like to win in triple overtime in game seven on home ice. Ryan Larson, the hero from Kamloops. <laughs> That's Thunder Sky Walking Bear of a Thunder Child First Nation in Saskatchewan. All the Wolfpack teams, uh, the Canada West teams now eliminated, wasn't really a good season wins and losses wise for any of them, but I did want to focus on a bright spot. Head coach Pat Henley called me, he said, Marty, come check this guy out. He's a really cool story on and off the court. He's mm -hmm. a transfer from Olds College in Alberta. In so Alberta, yeah. um, first, his first year, he was a bit nervous in Canada West. 
uh, was heavily affected by what happened at the residential school here and ended up kind of talking to the team about it and took a leadership role on in, in that regard. And I talked to him about that and more in this little interview right here. Your name's Thunder Sky. Yeah. And you're from Thunder Child. Is there a relation there? Actually, no. My grandfather actually named my name Thunder Sky. He actually came up to my parents and was like, you're going to name him Thunder Sky. That's his first name. And my parents were like, okay. And I was born with that ever since. But I've heard that it was thundering outside in the sky when I was born. So that could have been a reason, Thunder Sky. There could not be a better name for a volleyball player for an outside hitter, Thunder Sky. I mean, yeah, my job is to totally bring the thunder is what everyone tells me. And I was, that's exactly what I bring. When the findings of the residential school happened, how did that affect you? Uh, I found that out at work and that was a big deal to me. That kind of hit home hearing about all those stories because I could relate so closely to people and family that I have at home sharing the same stories and hearing these findings and it does take a big like shock on you. Both my parents were first-hand residential school survivors. Did you say some words to the team at some point when this happened? Or? Yeah, Pat asked me to touch briefly on the residential school systems and Every Child Matters Day. And I basically told my team that if you really wanted to help my us, like as in me, my people, uh, just to help educate yourself. Take the time to learn what really happened to my people. Take the time to ask us at the appropriate time. Is that something you're comfortable doing or was it hard for you to kind of get up there and then talk to, talk to the guys like that? At first it was a little bit tough because I was still relatively brand new to the team and coming all the way from my old college and where I was so used to being with the guys there for three years and coming to a whole completely different new province, new environment, new city, like totally different and after that. But now I'm so close with the guys, it's hard to really imagine that I was actually ever nervous in front of them. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I, I, I got anger. I got <laughs> just anger right there. Most overrated team in the history of the CFL, boy. I tell you. Have you have you been to Saski before? I spent a month in Unity one night, and it was. Uh, it Unity. Was, uh, I said, Unity is a little town in the in, in central Saskatchewan, and I also spent a lot of time. I got stuck in Senlac, Saskatchewan, which is a town of 101 people at the time. This is in the late 80s, past Lloydminster, and then you go down this gravel road for about three miles and you come over this ridge and it's just a little town of, of uh, trailers and uh, you know the, the video store was in someone's trailer that someone ran a cafe out of their out of their kitchen um, yeah it's, I've been to Saskatchewan I have. I think Brandy uh, is from the Lloyd Minster area so yeah. she, she might know. Uh, Lloyd Minster is right towns. on the two eh? you can be in two provinces at the same time. After um, my stint as an intern at, at KTW I went to Prince Albert Prince for Albert. a twilight zone of my life. What's going yes. on back there guys? Are you everything okay? <laughs> There's a whisper back there. It's a whisper fest. Yes. yes. And uh, yeah, I know I wasn't sure if I, I could still be in Prince Albert if it wasn't wasn't for you. Home of uh, John Diefenbaker that's, and uh, that's my, right. uh, my family, actually. Diefenbaker yeah. Park. Yeah, Diefenbaker, yeah, he's from, uh, from there, yeah. Okay, but all this preamble really leads into our next segment, which is Last Week, This Week, where we will meet Brandalf of the Shire. Good morning. Good morning. Were, you, were you listening to any of that uh, nonsense? I was listening to that nonsense. Do and you... I have to say, I don't follow the CFL anymore. But as the former Saskatchewan resident born and raised, you know, you can't really diss the riders. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you can diss the riders. Where, where is it? Yeah. You're from like you're near, near Lloydminster somewhere? Yeah, I grew up on a farm just uh, around the Lloydminster area and actually went to high school in Lloydminster. Went back to Lloydminster, rode at the booster for... Uh, two summers uh, after I graduated from J school here. So yeah, lots of lots of roots back there. Nice. We, we graduated together. I'm proud of you. You've, you've done so many things. I don't understand all of it though. So can you break it down? What has <laughs> happened here with, with Discourse and the Wren and Sun Peaks News? Can you kind of give us the Coles notes? Yes, definitely. So I've been the publisher, managing editor, and actual owner of Sun Peaks Independent News for about the last uh, six or seven years. And two years ago, back in 2020, I started working with an organization out of the Lower Mainland called The Discourse. They're an independent um, news company, which is really focused on um, creating community news in a new way, using new models and uh, new revenue models as well. So we were uh, started working together um, and the pandemic hit and we started to 
uh, really experiment with reader revenue and other uh, ways of, of supporting community news in Sun Peaks. And that relationship just continued to evolve and develop. And uh, we decided it would be really great to join forces. So we, Sun Peaks Independent News is becoming a part of the discourse. They have um, community news outlets on uh, Vancouver Island in Cowichan and in Nanaimo. They also have a sister publication that operates out of the Okanagan and on Vancouver Island called Indigenous, which is completely Indigenous led. And uh, now we, Sun Peaks Independent News will be joining. And then we are also launching a new independent outlet that will be serving Kamloops and the surrounding community called The Wren. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, you're you're kind of like the top lead dog though, right? Like you're the CEO now? <laughs> like, is that what it is? Yes, so my title will be CEO, and um, I'm really excited to be able to take a lot of the things that I've learned over the past two years and uh, and share them with the team and implement them. And But it's a really collaborative workspace, and um, I just really feel like I'm joining, joining a team. So I'm really excited to work with the talent and the inspiring journalists that are a part of that network. So Kamloops is an intensely competitive media market, more so than a lot of cities uh, larger than Kamloops. I've worked in a few, and this is, this is never, I've never been in anything like this. I came up here when the Daily News was still here, and then CBC mm -hmm. came here, and then we have all the online outlets. How do you survive? Yeah, so I think that we're coming in from a bit of a different perspective, and I'm, we're not here to compete. We're here to complement and collaborate. And um, that is really just kind of the ethos of the discourse. And it's something that's worked really well for me um, over the past couple of years as well. So what we're going to be doing is, is really different from what other people are doing in the market. Um, first of all, you mentioned the revenue and the, and the reader revenue. So that's really going to be the center of what we're trying to do. And um, it's working in other communities. And we, we think that it can work here. And we think that... Um, like what you mentioned, people really valuing community news. Canadians are stepping up and paying for community news and um, more so than they ever have before. So we feel that this is something that we can really experiment with and innovate with. Um, there's other ways that we can support community news as well. There's philanthropic support, and then there's also um, a bit of sponsorship and things like that, but, but not a traditional advertising, not a pay-per-click um, type of revenue model. And what that type of model allows us to do is just to really take a step out of the really hectic news cycle and the competitiveness that you're kind of describing and uh, create and really embrace a slower type of journalism, a more in-depth type of journalism, um, which is, you know, really needed. And I think that, um, yeah, I, we're, it's working in other communities. People really respond to it. and. Um, we've been listening to the community a lot. We've been doing a lot of stakeholder engagement in uh, around Kamloops for the last six months or so. And uh, the response has been great. Uh, people have so many ideas about what we could be covering. Um, and people have been really receptive, including other media organizations as well. So I think that we're off to a great start. We, uh, we actually had to get permission from our, our owner, Basement Bob, to have you on here because you're considered a competitor. Okay, you are a competitor. Just just know that. Um, what, what's, your, what's your vision for the content of, of the REN and how is it different? Yeah, so the content is really going to be community driven. We're practicing something called engaged journalism or public journalism, and that means that we really let the readers set the news agenda for us. So um, right now, we don't really know what our first investigation or our first topic is going to be. Um, we're still coming to that conclusion based on our interactions and, and community listening, as well as um, who's in the community who is ready to step into a role as a freelance writer or a freelance journalist or freelance photographer. We're just looking for people who feel that they have a story that maybe hasn't been told yet. Um, and we're getting lots of responses, and um, we should be we should be publishing soon. But we're not going to rush anything. I think uh, you and I had a little walk not too long ago, and you were kind of telling me about how you went through maybe like a period of just like doubting the media situation, but then you kind of came through that with a bit a bit more of a positive view on it. Can you just maybe talk about that for a second? Definitely. I think the media space is incredibly challenging, like Chris alluded to. And if you look at the uh, statistics, you know, I think uh, news revenues across the nation are down 60 percent over the last decade. Um, I've been really blessed here in Sun Peaks with a very supportive readership and a very supportive um, business community that has really 
allowed us to to do well here um but it was still really hard <laughs> and it was still it was really hard to do it i i did feel alone a lot of the time up here um you know i'm very much in a part of the community but nobody is doing what i'm doing up here and it, it can feel very isolating and i was just feeling really uh really bogged down and um, a couple of things happened that really really inspired me um one was getting to know the discourse and finding a group of people that were so aligned in my values and my passions and uh, just seeing these uh, the response and the success that we had with reader revenue during the pandemic really re-inspired me that news can be done in a different way and that it's kind of my responsibility as a publisher to try and do new things because it's going to help everybody in uh, the news industry and all the readers if we can figure out a new way to do news that is more sustainable. And I think I read somewhere either on the discourse or the Ren that the the people in positions of power like yourself are, are all female with your group. Is that is that right? Yes, the discourse is completely woman led. It's a very feminist organization and uh, indigenous news as well as all uh, indigenous women leading the team there and writing. So it's a, a great inclusive and intersectional space and we're trying to um, have that reflected in all of our coverage and it's really a great internal culture as well. Okay, here's my one semi hardball that's not really a hardball of the day. Okay, I got to found a quote on the Wren's website. It says, some news outlets always highlight the same things over and over and are never interested in focusing on what's new and changing. There's one more. It says, we need a media outlet that brings positive connections where people look forward to it instead of feeling drained before even reading the news. Are these veiled shots at Kamloops this week in local media? <laughs> not, not at all. Um, I think that that model that everyone is working under is just kind of like a systemic issue within news that even when people are super passionate journalists and are doing their best, um, their resources just aren't 100% there to create the news maybe in the way that they want to. Um, another thing that we can do at the REN is focus on um, a type of journalism called solutions-based journalism. And it's really taking these social problems and other problems that we tend to um, read about a lot in the news and, but maybe, aren't looking, this is a way where we can look at other communities, um, other solutions that may have been tried in other places, and really try and just write the news a little bit differently, um, break the mold. It is definitely not a, a slight <laughs> at uh, any existing Kamloops organizations. And um, yeah, I'm just really, really uh, happy with the reception that we've got from so many of you so far. So cool. we're this here to cooperate and collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? No, I think that I agree with Brandy. Uh, when people, you know, the revenues are down 60 60 percent, and uh, and uh, I, I do a newsletter every morning. Uh, I send it out. We have about 3,000 subscribers, and then write it up every night. And I link to different articles and try to make it funny. And I link to other articles: New York Times, The Guardian, all sorts of different places. Tai. And I got an email from a couple of people, and these people in town aren't hurting for money. And they say, "Hey, I love your newsletter, but can you link to places where there's no paywall?" And I said to them, well, I understand that, but when you call a plumber to fix your toilet, do you expect him to do it for free? No, you don't. So you should pay for your news if you can. And if you like something, pay for it. And it doesn't cost a lot, but if, if you, everyone paid that little bit, it would help us out a lot. That's, that's where we're, you know, I think that's where newspapers and news organizations screwed up in the 90s by offering everything for free online. And people are used to that. And I think reader revenue is one thing. And I think, um, I think paywalls aren't a bad thing if you want to pay for something. I have two subscriptions, New York Times and Globe and Mail. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap, but it's worth yeah. my, my time to do it. And I know that I'm helping to pay a journalist because no one should have to work for free. So I'm, I'm with you on that for sure. There was no yeah, question in there. Too. No, I just wanted there was, to. I, the there's no comment. question. I just wanted to echo what you were saying there. Is uh, and that's good. And we should maybe collaborate on, on on stories with the Wren if you want to do that. We're doing something right now. I think is fantastic. A month long series on on homeless in Kamloops, talking to them. And we we actually collaborated with a master's student from Grant McEwen, Katrina Karina Latris, and her and Dave Eagles went out, and we're getting great reception to that. So I'm all for that too. Let's 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 and you get a wider audience and you'll help us help us get a little more softer and social socially <laughs> conscious and uh, make me a probably better person. There you go. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. That sounds great. And I have absolutely love this series that you're doing. And I just want to say to Marty, too, I really enjoy 
you know, seeing you uh, really kill it in the space, the industry in Kamloops and seeing what you're doing with the show is just really cool. So thank you so much for uh, having me on today. Well, thank you very much, Brandalf. Uh, any final words or uh, are we good here? Um, I would just encourage people to get online and check us out and uh, please get in touch if you have ideas. We have a survey as well. So um, yeah, just Google the Ren Kamloops and you'll be able to find us. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot, Brandy. Take it easy. Bye. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. Brand Alpha of the Shire. I, I like Brandy. I've always yeah. liked Brandy. I didn't have too many friends in J school. Uh, the program, Obviously. not because... It was just that the program didn't really mesh. Like it wasn't like you go do things outside the program. Okay. I don't have any long, really long time. It's different things. now. The program's changed over there too to more of a, I think, communications thing yeah. because that's the reality of life. But uh, I got offered to teach a course. You did? Yeah. What was it on? Sports journalism. Excellent. Yeah. Take in, it uh, on. May and May and June here. So. Good. Well, yeah, you could teach those kids a lot of good stuff. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Anything else on the show? No, I just wanted to go back really quickly to uh, Dunstan at the Briar, and, and, and it's great that the Kamloops guy who's curling out of Saskatchewan is, is doing great there, but I just have a beef with the Briar. Just okay. one last thing. Thank I just you. think there's 18 <laughs> bloody teams at the Briar right now, and with all due respect to Dunstan, he shouldn't even be there. It's, well, if he's got his name right, if you're going to rip him, well, it's Dunstone. <laughs> Dunstone. Oh, Dunstan. <laughs> Dunstone. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's, he's there, and it's great, and I hope he wins, but really, he shouldn't be there. He's a wild card. There should be no wild cards there. There should be no Team Canada there. There's 13... There's 10 provinces and three territories and then Northern Ontario. And then we have Team Canada and they have Wildcard 1, 2, and 3. By next year, you'll probably have like Lower Mainland and Kamloops. I just, I, that really bugs me. Just like the Memorial Cup when you have a host team there, it bugs me because it's, it's diluted. That's all I want to say. I think they're just trying to get the best possible talent Too many teams. in the country there. If you lose your provincial championship and then you make it in the back door and you win, it's a tainted win. It's an asterisk win. It's, it's, they shouldn't be there. No, I'm sure he, he's great, and I'm, I'm happy for him. I just have a hard time seeing wild cards in yeah. Team Canada. If, 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 if you can't win your, your provincial championship, you shouldn't be there. Do you like the fact that he is a Winnipegger Kamloopsian that, I like that leads a rink of Virginians? Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it blows my some mind. Some people don't yes. like that. No, I was mentioning him to the guys at curling last night, and they kind of found that weird that a guy from Kamloops is curling for a Saskatchewan team. They didn't think that was right. Mm -hmm. So there's all this, this purist, right? That's, yeah. you know, you're, well, you're, you're, I, I, for one, Matt Dunstone, are happy you're at the Briar. I'm happy you're at the Briar, but I think I, I can I, win a, a Briar for Kamloops, unlike well, Mr. Mr. Negative. It wouldn't be for Kamloops. It would be for a wildcard team. He's with, been here for with, five years unknown. now. Yeah, five but it's years. from parts But the rest of his team is from... KGCC from, member. Are they all Kamloopsians? No, three of them are, are Virginians. Okay, so who who wins the thing then? Where, where does, it, where does the Briar go? He's the skip. It's like the Stanley Cup. Oh, you bring it bring it back home. Well, no. Yeah. Because he, you're not going to have a sip out of the briar no, because wins, the tanker because of this. If he wins on the every, every year, it's like this team wins from BC, this team from Alberta. Where's the wild card? Parts unknown. Where, well, where is he it? gets to take it to Kamloops and then to Winnipeg and then they can go to Regina. Get rid of the wild card. Get back to and get rid of the universal DL in the in the <laughs> just DH, a quick baseball in, the, in the baseball. There, Rob Manfred's ruining that sport too. I tell you, man, I just don't like 18 teams. Come on, there should be at the most 13. Okay, hot finish to the show here. Mike, we haven't even said hi to you. Any good stories? You've had some good ones lately about things found outside the uh, uh, yeah, place? You know what? I, I didn't tell you guys this, but uh, at uh, 12 o'clock the other night, um, somebody broke into our furnace room again. Again? Uh, he had a number yeah. of break-ins. what I did was I booby-trapped our, our side yard. <laughs> with a huge sound system from Lee's Music. And I had it, so it was all remote control, and I blasted it <laughs> with the siren. What? And, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. And then my wife and I came down and made sure everything's locked up. And That's a great story. We should so, ask. So, the, so the siren goes, you, you're not monitoring, it just goes off automatically. You well, you booby-trapped it. it. You MacGyvered it. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. were you watching on camera at home the whole night just in case someone broke in? And then I, you, I have been for months, <laughs> and it, it's been pretty quiet. I didn't catch the uh, mad crapper out front. No, the mad crapper. <laughs> but, but I definitely got the furnace breaking guy uh, the other night. Do you have a camera to see his response or no? Uh, no. Okay. No, yeah. he was just off camera in that particular case, okay. and I, I wanted to set up the camera a little differently so I can actually Good. Hopefully he doesn't. Himself. Hopefully he doesn't steal the camera. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Okay, I thought that was a fun show. Thanks again to uh, New Leaf Produce Market. The peppers are on sale. The radish, radishes, the radish, radishes, the radishes are on sale. Yeah, radishes, Spaghetti yeah. squash. I'm taking the apples home, so those aren't up for grabs. Two Big Macs. Okay, share the episode. You can have it. McDonald's. We love you, and Herman. We love you too, buddy. For Chris Folds. For Marty Hastings, for Magic Mike, for Bonnie at the controls, this has been Kamloops last week, and we will see you last week.